Hey everyone, and welcome back. We're diving deep into Core Chronicles 7 Part 1 today. Oh yeah. And uh, Core Tech is just dropping bombshell after bombshell, like updates galore. It's amazing. It really is. They're hitting like every angle. Yeah. We're talking data, payments, and even some juicy hints about Orlayer's New York trip. Oh, right. New York. So much to unpack. Let's start with this core ETL thing. Okay. It's being called the Marie Condo of blockchain data. Mm -hmm. But what does that actually like mean for us regular folks? So blockchain data, it can be a mess. Oh, yeah. Like seriously disorganized right. and trying to get anything useful out of it is like, well... Impossible. Almost. Like finding a needle in a haystack. That's where Core UTL comes in. Okay, so it cleans things up. It's more than that. It structures the data, makes it usable, ready for analysis. So it's not just about tidiness. It's about actually making the data useful. Exactly. Businesses can do better analysis, spot trends, make smarter decisions. Mm. Developers can build better apps. Researchers can dig deeper. And you said this can even work on, like, my phone. Yeah. They made it compatible with all sorts of databases, mm -hmm. PostgreSQL, MySQL, Squy, even IoT devices and mobile phones. Wow, querying blockchain data from my phone. Exactly, the possibilities are huge. Okay, that's wild. Now let's move on to Pay2, which just got a huge upgrade. Pay2, right. They're talking about speed and intelligence, but how is it different from all the other payment systems out there? Well, the big thing is Pay2 cuts out the middleman. Oh, interesting. Using this fiddle kit framework, it does instant transfers with NFC tags, QR codes, simple links, even meta tags. So no more waiting for banks or processors. Exactly. No delays, no extra fees. So faster payments, but also more control for users. Absolutely. You're in control of your money. Transactions go straight to the blockchain. No intermediaries. Plus, there are things like recurring payments to make managing your finances even easier. Seven seconds for a transaction. That's incredible. No more fumbling with cards. Yeah. Now, what about UniQuery? This one seems to be for those who love SQL and want to get into blockchain data. Okay, so UniQuery is like a bridge between traditional databases and the blockchain. Okay. It uses the Drizzle ORM plugin, which acts as a translator between those two worlds. Mm. And SQL, or structured query language, is a super powerful tool for managing and querying data in those traditional databases. Right. With UniQuery, anyone who knows SQL can use those skills to interact with blockchain data. So it's like a decoder ring for blockchain, making it more accessible for people who already know SQL. Exactly. Imagine a financial analyst who's used to SQL. Yeah. Now they can easily query blockchain data, analyze transactions, generate reports, all with the tools they already know. Wow. Talk about opening up possibility. Totally. It's a game changer. Absolutely. And speaking of changing the game, Cortec is making some serious moves with NFC routing. Oh, yeah, NFC routing. They're talking about a revolution in how we pay. So NFC, near-field communication, is what lets you tap your phone to pay, right? Oh. Well, Cortec is taking it to a whole new level with NFC routing. It's incredibly fast, super secure, and easy to use. Just tap and you're done. It's like I walk into a store, tap my phone, and I'm out the door before I can even blink. Pretty much. And it's not just retail. Imagine entire enterprise networks for global payments using this. Mm. It could transform supply chains, cross-border transactions, even how we interact with cities. Wow. Okay, so we've got lightning-fast payments, organized data, tools for bridging traditional systems, and blockchain. What else does Cortec have in store? Well, how about blockchain payments without internet access? Wait, what? No internet? How is that even possible? I thought blockchain was all about being online. Right. But this is where it gets interesting. Cortec developed TXM, or zero data transactions. Right. It uses things like SMS or MMS to send encoded text messages. Huh. Those messages have everything needed for blockchain settlement. So even in areas with limited or no internet, people can still participate in the blockchain economy. Exactly. It's about financial inclusion, reaching everyone. Wait, so I could literally send someone money via text and it would be settled on the blockchain? Yep. Pretty much. That's mind-blowing. Yeah. And it shows how committed Cortec is to making blockchain accessible to everyone, regardless of location or internet access. Absolutely. Okay, I am seriously impressed. Cortec is thinking outside the box here. And it sounds like they've been busy analyzing Bricks Pay, that cross-border payment system. Yeah, they dug deep into it. And what did they find? They uncovered this thing called DCMS, the Decentralized Cross-Border Message System. DCMS. Yeah. And it could be the key to seamless global payments, like sending money across borders as easily as sending a text. So fast, secure, and 
hopefully without those crazy fees banks charge. That's the idea. DCMS is a decentralized network that lets different payment systems around the world talk to each other and settle transactions. So I can send money to someone across the world as easily as paying my neighbor. That's the vision. <laughs> this is getting me excited about the future of finance, you know? Yeah. It seems like Cortec is building a system that's more inclusive, more efficient for everyone. I think so too. But what about people who are still hesitant to jump into crypto because of the price volatility? That's a valid concern, and Cortec has a solution. Stable tokens. Oh? They created a stable token structure pegged to fiat currency. So you get the stability of traditional finance, but with the advantages of blockchain. So no more worrying about the price of Bitcoin going haywire. Right. These stable tokens are designed to address those concerns about volatility, making blockchain-based finance more approachable. That makes a lot of sense. It's like a bridge for people who are used to traditional finance. Exactly. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Security and transparency of blockchain with the stability and liquidity of fiat. This is a great example of Cortec tackling a real obstacle to mainstream adoption. They're not just building tech for the sake of it, but actually solving real problems. Right. But let's be real. The world of blockchain can still feel a bit like the Wild West sometimes. Yeah, I get that. So how is Cortec making sure they're playing by the rules? Compliance is key, especially when it comes to finance. And Cortec gets that. They've developed the GoAML5 library to streamline KYC or know your customer processes. KYC, right. So <laughs> this is about making sure financial institutions can properly verify their customers' identities. Exactly. To prevent things like money laundering. Go AML5 helps institutions comply with regulations, manage risks, and ensure the integrity of the whole blockchain ecosystem. It's good to know they're taking compliance seriously. Definitely. Now, for all the developers out there, what's the story with the core license? It's all about empowering the open source community. Okay. It's a permissive license that lets developers modify and share Cortex software as long as they keep those changes public. Hmm. This promotes transparency and collaboration. So it's like an open invitation for developers to tinker, experiment, and improve on what Cortec has built. Exactly. It's about harnessing the collective brain power of the developer community to drive innovation. Very cool. Yeah. But enough about the tech. Let's talk about Orlier's New York adventure. Oh, yeah. The mystery trip. It was all very hush-hush, but we know he was busy building partnerships and setting the stage for some big announcements. Yeah, lots of speculation. So potentially game-changing collaborations that could propel Cortec to a whole new level. It seems that way. And to navigate the world of corporate communications, they've partnered with Level Up, a leading strategic communications firm. Okay, what does Level Up bring to the table? They're experts in shaping narratives, generating buzz, connecting with influencers. So they'll help Cortec tell their story effectively. Exactly. Make sure their message resonates with a wider audience. It's smart. In a world flooded with information, you need to stand out and make people understand why your work matters. Absolutely. And speaking of cutting edge, what about this TLA Smart City? Ah, TLA Smart City. It's Cortex's grand vision for the future of urban living. They've developed prototype equipment that can turn any city into a smart city. With Luna Mesh for communication, decentralized storage, IoT readers, even miners. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. What are the real-world benefits of all this? Imagine cities that optimize traffic, improve energy efficiency, enhance public safety, even facilitate things like blockchain-based voting. Okay, wow. So TLA Smart City has the potential to revolutionize how we live and work in cities. It really does. And the best part, the lampposts are agnostic meaning they can work with existing infrastructure. So no need to rip and replace everything. Exactly. Making the transition to a smart city much more feasible and cost-effective for cities. This is incredible. Cortec is really applying blockchain to solve real-world problems, creating a more efficient, sustainable future. Absolutely. So we've covered a lot here. Data, payments, blockchain without internet, smart cities, partnerships, and so much more. Cortec is firing on all cylinders. They're not just building tech, they're building an ecosystem, a whole movement. It's amazing. And this is just part one of our deep dive into Core Chronicle 7. So much more to come. We'll be back soon to dig even deeper into these developments and explore what it all means. Stay tuned. Can't wait. You know, it's really fascinating how Cortec is approaching this whole blockchain adoption thing. Yeah. They're not just like throwing tech out there and hoping for the best. Right. They're actually thinking about the needs of 
regular people, you know, and institutions too. It does seem like they're trying to make blockchain less intimidating. Exactly. Like with their stable token structure, yeah. pegging them to fiat currency, that takes away a huge barrier for a lot of people. With price swings, right? Yeah, the volatile. So crypto can feel like a roller coaster sometimes. Totally. And for newcomers or people just wanting a more stable way to manage their money, yeah. stable tokens provide that sense of like, familiarity right like you're not going to lose everything overnight exactly it's like dipping your toes into the blockchain pool without you know jumping into the deep end i like that analogy and i love how cortec focuses on real world applications like that tla smart city project tla smart city it's not just about cool tech it's about actually improving lives it really is it's a vision of the future where cities are more efficient sustainable responsive to citizens needs Imagine a city where traffic just flows smoothly, energy is used wisely, and public safety is top-notch, all thanks to real-time data. Yeah. It's like a well-oiled machine, but with blockchain for transparency and security. And those lampposts are more than just streetlights, right? They're like mini data centers packed with tech. Absolutely. Luna Mesh for communication, decentralized storage, IoT readers, even miners. It's amazing how they fit all that into one unit. Right. And the fact they can be integrated with existing infrastructure makes it so much easier for cities to adopt. No need to start from scratch. Exactly. It's a practical approach. Speaking of practical, let's talk about those strategic partnerships Cortec is building. Oh, yeah. Those. Or Lear's New York trip was super secretive, but there were hints he was meeting with some big names. Yeah, lots of rumors. Any guesses on who those might be? Well, he mentioned meetings with media giants like Bloomberg, Fox News, CBS, ABC. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Seems like they're trying to reach a wider audience, not just the tech crowd. It's a bold move. They want to be a household name. And they brought in Level Up to help them do that. That top-notch communications firm, right? What do you think their role will be? Level Up is all about crafting the right story, the right message. Right. They'll make sure Cortex vision resonates with a wider audience. It's all about storytelling these days. You can have the best tech in the world, but if you can't communicate its value... It won't go anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Level Up's expertise will be key in connecting with those who might not understand blockchain yet. It's like they're building a bridge between the tech world and the everyday person. Yeah, I get that. Making it less about the tech itself and more about how it can benefit people. Right demystifying blockchain and showing its real-world potential. So what else is in store for Cortex? <laughs> I'm hooked. Well, one of the most exciting things is the upcoming release of CorePass version 2. Oh yeah, CorePass. They're really taking it to the next level. They're turning it from a simple digital wallet into a full-blown business management tool. Like a Swiss army knife for blockchain? What kind of features are we talking about? Think digital attributes for employee credentials. Yeah. Verified wallets across multiple blockchains for seamless transactions. Got it. And even custom DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations for businesses to manage their operations more efficiently and transparently. Hold on. DAOs. I've heard that term. Did not sure I fully grasp it. Can you break it down? Sure. Imagine a company where decisions are made collectively by stakeholders, all recorded and verified on the blockchain. Hmm, interesting. That's essentially a DAO. It's a new way of organizing and running businesses more democratic and transparent. So it's like turning the traditional company structure upside down. In a way, yes. DAOs distribute decision making, give everyone a voice, and ensure accountability. This sounds radical. Yeah. And Cortec is letting businesses create their own DAOs. Exactly. With CorePass V2, businesses can tailor their DAOs to their specific needs, making things more efficient and engaging. It's like they're democratizing business itself, giving more power to individuals. And fostering a more collaborative approach to decision making. CoreTech is really pushing the envelope with blockchain, both for businesses and individuals. It's an exciting time to be following all of this. Absolutely. I'm already looking forward to part three of this deep dive. Me too. There's still so much more to uncover. It's amazing how Cortec manages to be both cutting edge and responsible at the same time. Yeah, I agree. They're not just chasing the latest fads. They're really building a sustainable ecosystem. Right. One that can actually work in the real world. Exactly. And initiatives like the Go AML5 library show that commitment. Yeah, the KYC stuff is important. It is. By making KYC smoother, they're helping institutions comply with regulations, you know, manage risks. Right. Keep everything above board. Exactly. And that builds trust, paves the way for wider adoption. It's not about throwing the old system out the window. It's about integrating blockchain responsibly. I think so, too. Now, let's circle back to CorePass version 2. Oh, yeah. CorePass. 
It's more than just a digital wallet now, right? It's a whole suite of business tools. It really is. CorePass V2 is a game changer, especially for businesses wanting to use blockchain. Yeah, those custom DAOs sound super interesting. Right. It's like giving businesses the tools to create their own little decentralized worlds. That's a good way to put it. DAOs offer a more transparent, democratic way to run things, give everyone a say. Mm. And with CorePass V2, businesses can customize their DAOs to fit their needs. It's almost like they're democratizing business itself. I think so. More power to individuals, more collaboration. And let's not forget about Cortex's commitment to open source with a core license. Yeah, absolutely. That's huge. Letting developers modify and share their software is a big vote of confidence in the community. It shows they're not afraid to share their knowledge, encourage collaboration. It's like they're saying, hey, let's build the future of blockchain together. Yeah, exactly. But okay, we have to talk about Orlier's New York trip again. Oh, the mystery deepens. Those secret meetings have everyone buzzing. Lots of theories flying around. What do you think he was up to? Well, the meetings with media giants like Bloomberg, Fox News. Yeah, CBS, ABC. Makes you think they're gearing up for a big... PR push, you know, going mainstream. It's a smart move. And with Level Up on board. Oh, yeah. They've got the best in the business. They know how to tell a story, connect with people. Exactly. They'll help Cortec explain blockchain in a way everyone can understand. It's not just about the tech itself. Mm -hmm. It's about the potential, the benefits. Right. Painting a picture of a better future. After this deep dive into Core Chronicles 7, I'm really blown away by Cortec. Me too. They're doing some amazing things. Their ambition, their innovation but also their commitment to building a responsible, inclusive blockchain space. It's inspiring to see. So to everyone listening, keep exploring blockchain. Yeah, don't be afraid to dive in. Do your own research, ask questions, stay curious. This is a technology that's still developing. There's so much more to come. And remember, the future of blockchain is being shaped right now. We're all part of it. By staying informed, by having these conversations, by supporting companies like CoreTech, we can help shape that future. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Core Chronicles 7. It's been a pleasure. We'll be back soon with more explorations into the world of blockchain and technology. Until then, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries. Couldn't have said it better myself.